All right. So good morning, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Greetings to all of us on Swastiastu Namo Buddhaya. Greetings of kindness. Salam beautifying Indonesia. Welcome to webinar promoting Indonesian natural cosmetic products in Belgium and European. Warmest greeting to His Excellency Ambassador Mr. Andy Hadi and her wife and uh, the CEO of Marta Tilar Group, Mr. Kilala Tilaar, and all the visiting participants who I will greet as friend of Marta Tilaar Group today. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this world is currently experiencing a global pandemic uh, crisis due to COVID-19, uh, which is affecting many sectors. And however, that doesn't mean that we cannot do anything about it and many activities that have been running offline uh, has to adapt quickly to online forms. And likewise, this uh, factory activity, uh, factory visit, I mean, usually visitors can come and witness the first hand of the kitchen of Marta Tilara Group, but because of this pandemic, uh, we invite you to have a virtual tour. And even though this activity uh, runs online, we hope that can provide useful information for uh, all participants. So to start our uh, agenda today, I would like to repress a new uh, video, but there's a saying in Indonesian language that uh, called tak kenal maka tak sayang. It, it means, uh, and it means, And it means um, in order to love something, you must know them first. And that's what we want to introduce you. So we're hoping that you could um, love Marta Tilara Group even more from now. And I would like to take you all to watch our company profile. And in this company profile, there's a brief story about how uh, the struggle of, Mas of Mrs. Marta Tilara uh, in introducing Indonesian's natural uh, cosmetic in, uh, and cultural well. And starting in the garage of her parents' house, uh, Mr. Matadila are becoming one of the leading cosmetic company in Indonesia. So ladies and gentlemen, I present you our company profile of Matadila Group. Please enjoy. Salah satu perusahaan kecantikan terdepan di tanah air. Setelah lebih dari empat dekade, kami tetap bersemangat dan konsisten mengeksplorasi kekayaan alam dan budaya untuk mempercantik wanita Indonesia. Dan semangat ini kami implementasikan melalui empat pilar. Beauty culture, education, dan Women Empowerment. Kini, Marta Tilar Group semakin kokoh menjadi perusahaan kecantikan terpadu dengan tujuh unit usaha. PT Marta Beauty Gallery PT Marta Beauty Gallery 
manages Puspita Martha International Beauty School that focus on beauty education sector. It's the largest beauty school in Indonesia that provides professional beautician trainings with specialty in makeup, hairdressing, and spa therapy programs. PT Martha Beauty Gallery has graduated thousands of beauty experts with international certification and skills that have been professionally acknowledged in the country and abroad. PT Martina Berto Tebeka company that operates cosmetic and herbal manufacturing business. PT Martina Berto Tebeka processes Indonesia's natural resources which have been cultivated in Kampong Jambo Organic. Producing cosmetic products based on natural ingredients, Pete Martina Berto TBK conducts research and development in Martha Tilla Innovation Center. This R&D center has received ISO 14000 certificate and supported by numerous scientists and specialists. Pete Martina Berto TBK also has received EcoCert Certificate and acquired Halal Certificate and Halal Assurance System Certificate Grade A three times in a row. In its two international standard production facilities, various cosmetic and herbal products are produced using the latest technology and state-of-the-art machineries. So every product produced here is in good quality, safe, and halal. Pete Martina Berto TBK also manages retail business. Martha Tilla Shop, which have been widely spread across Indonesia and abroad. Pete Sedafindo. Pete Sedefindo is the company that operates a toll manufacturing company that provides full and custom production services. Pete Sedefindo is equipped with sophisticated production machineries and has received international certificates. Pete Sedefindo had worked with many companies, including multinational companies. PT SIE Indonesia PT SIE Indonesia is a national scale logistic and distribution company with the largest and strongest network in decorative cosmetic segment in Indonesia. Not only distributes Mata Tila group products, PT SIE Indonesia also serves international companies. Numerous prestigious companies trust PT SIE Indonesia in distributing their products. PT Creative Style, an advertising company with specialty in communication strategy and advertising. We provide services in photography and photography studio, event, branding, advertising, and design. Pete Creative Style is not only dedicated to Martha Tilla Group, but also to non-group companies. Pete Creative Style had managed various marketing communication projects for many companies. Pete Kriasi Boga Primatama. 
professional outsource company for industrial and non-industrial businesses that puts optimum service as a priority. PT Kriyasi Boga Primatama had worked with companies from many business sectors. PT Chantika Puspa Pesona. that manages Martha Tilla Spa, a renowned international award-winning spa franchise. Pete Chantika Puspa Persona provides an authentic Indonesian spa experience in over 50 outlets spread in cities across the archipelago. The subsidiary manages Eastern Garden Martha Tilla Spa, Martha Tilla Salon Day Spa, and Mata Chila Spa Express. Pete Chantika Puspa Persona also runs Mata Chila Training Center, a spa training center that empowers Indonesian women becoming professional therapists. As a pioneer in beauty industry in Indonesia, Martha Tiller Group keeps receiving prestigious achievements in national and international scales. We will continuously explore inspiration and Indonesian culture and aim to be the leading integrated beauty company in Indonesia. Martha Tiller Group, beautifying Indonesia. Yeah, so that is our company profile of Martha Tiller Group. And at Martha Tiller Group, as you can see, we have a complete business unit, which includes end to end. And from Kampung Jamu Organic, uh, which has 650 species of medicinal, cosmetic, and aromatic plants that apply by uh, bioprospecting and AC plants cultivation cultivation by our assisted farmers, as well as company which specialize in providing tall manufacturing services for personal care and beauty products through Peta Seripindo. So we could say that apart from producing quality beauty products, we also have a business unit uh, that offers a variety of services in the field of beauty distribution. Uh, educational services, salons, spa, and many more. We have everything in Marta Dilar Group and we are here for the people of Indonesia, wherever they are. So next, uh, we have the honor to meet the ambassadors of Indonesia to Belgium, His Excellency Ambassadors, Mr. Andre Hadi, who will officially open this webinar. Please welcome Mr. Andre Hadi. Terima kasih, uh, uh, Mr. Kilala Tilar, CEO of Marta Tilar Groups, uh, distinguished panelists and moderator, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning in Brussels and good afternoon in uh, Jakarta. It is an honor and privilege for me to be here today. Uh, yeah, uh, today at the webinar and virtual uh, tour of Marta Tilar Group uh, theme uh, presenting Indonesia natural cosmetic and the traditional cultural heritage. Uh, Marta Tilar is one of the leading beauty and cosmetic industry from Indonesia established since 1970. I would like to extend my appreciation to Mr. Kilala Tilar, CEO of Marta Tilar Group for inviting me to deliver opening remark in this uh, webinar. Uh, Ferial, uh, my wife, who happens to be your childhood friends and neighbor, asked me to convey warm uh, greeting to you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Indonesia, known as uh, mother of uh, spices, is blessed with long history of uh, herbal medicine as part of our traditional culture more than 17,700 uh, types of spices, herbs grown in Indonesia 
uh, uh, irreversible of other types. And uh, with the, the growing trend of organic and back to nature lifestyle, the global demands for herbals increases more than ever. Uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic increases demand for commodities such as turmeric, curcuma, and ginger. Uh, however, the potential of Indonesian herbal community are not reflected in the global market. Indonesia rank only 28 in the world with export value point, uh, 4 uh, million point, uh, 97 and market share of only 0.71%. Uh, so we see uh, this is a chance for us to explore more for the market for herbal communities in the world, mainly in the land of uh, uh, Europe. Uh, uh, the, the continent of Europe is the largest market for cosmetic products in the world. And it is estimated that cosmetics and personal care industry bring at least 29 billion euro and added value to the European economy uh, annually. Uh, anyhow, European market possess its own challenges. Despite being the largest market of for cosmetic, Europe is also stringent in regulation and rule standards uh, in the interest of customer protection. For this, government, private sector, relevant association institution have to work together in assessing opportunity and challenges of promoting Indonesia export commodities for natural cosmetic. And this will require the balanced use of three pillar of sustainable development uh, goals, namely economic, social, and environment as the internationally accepted uh, standard. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an opportunity that Indonesia, mainly its industry in beauty and cosmetic, shall embrace further. So we are very proud that Marta Tilar and the embassy has worked together. Uh, and uh, we do hope that uh, COVID-19 situation does not hinder us to introduce uh, more for this valuable uh, Indonesian company. May we have a better luck in the near future to visit the factory physically uh, once COVID-19 vaccine is acceptable for uh, all of us, both in Indonesia and Belgium. So before concluding, I wish to inform that, uh, you that we have the economic team in the embassy consisting Ibu Nina, head of the economic division, Ibu Mary, uh, trade attache, uh, Pak Arif, uh, Argi Cultural Atase, and Pak Mogadisu, Industrial Atase. They are, uh, will be more than happy to provide you with any information that uh, you need. So, terima kasih, Pak Kilala. Uh, uh, stay healthy, and uh, selamat uh, pagi dari uh, Brussel. Terima kasih, Pak Dubes. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, His Excellency Ambassador. Next, I would like to meet our CEO, Mr. Gilala Tilaar, uh, CEO of Marta Tilaar Group and Hats Corporate Creative and Innovative of the Marta Tilaar Group, one of the largest natural beauty companies in Indonesia. Educated in Suffolk uh, University and Harvard University in the stage, Mr. Tilaar wanted uh, to introduce the richness of Indonesia's biodiversity and marine resources. He focuses the group's uh, research activities in natural, organic, and halal uh, products to bring the national, nation's local heritage to the global market. Mr. Gilala will share and explain to you uh, more about Marta Tilar Group and all our services. Please welcome Mr. Gilala Tilala. Thank you, Sasa. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, very good afternoon from Jakarta and a um, very good morning for you all in, uh, in Brussels. First of all, let me uh, express my gratitude for the opportunity given by the uh, Embassy of Indonesia at, the, uh, at Brussels and His Excellency, uh, Mr. Andri Hadi and Madam, who, who was my neighbor when I was uh, a, a young kid yeah, in Pajatem. 
How are you? Thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to, uh, to guide you to a tour of uh, Matatila R in, in virtual. But before we go on to the tour, let me first uh, explain to you the behind the scene of what is Matatila R group it stands for, what is the value, and what is the focus of the groups in developing all the indigenous uh, raw materials from Indonesia and the exotic in in, uh, ingredients for the cosmetics as well as the finished products. Uh, let me share with you all a, a small presentations of, of Marta Tila Art Group. Okay, yeah, there you go. So um, there's a saying Sasa just, said, just mentioned before that uh, it's impossible to know a person, it, it, impossible to love a person if you don't know them very well. So let me first introduce you to the group itself. So the group was founded in 1970 by Dr. Matatila R. Group, and she started the business in very humble beginning at a rented garage in central Jakarta. And at that time, we only have one employee. Uh, and, and now we are now 50 years in the business of cosmetics and uh, became one of the largest cosmetic company in ASEAN, in which uh, empowered by 4,000 employees, in which 80% of those employees are women. So Ibu Marta from the beginning have this one uh, dream is to, uh, to, to beautify and also to empower Indonesian women. So after 50 years, I think her, her dreams already came through that uh, the business is growing and also supported by 80% of our employees are women. So in the process, uh, 50 years in the business, we have around 11 brands and it's divided into segmentations from the luxury Indonesian products, mass consumers and affordable consumer products. So from the, the most expensive until the very uh, affordable uh, range of products. And, and the way we survive 50 years is because we are backed up by a, a very good research and innovation team. We established uh, Marta Tilan Innovation Center in 1999, and now it's empowered by 57 pharmacists, chemists, skin experts. And also we have a satellite uh, research facility in Lyon in, in France for skincare, uh, formulations and also for efficacy tests. And also we have the professional chair in ethnobotany in faculty in Leiden universities for almost, for more than 10 years. This is very important because uh, the Dutch, the Netherlands uh, uh, colonized Indonesia, uh, Indonesia for 350 years. And uh, they have all the data of uh, plants and the endemic plants that is uh, in Indonesia. So uh, we have the access uh, of, of, the, of the publications in, in, in Leiden in, in our uh, network. So we also actively uh, doing research with 26 local and also uh, regional universities uh, to do a lot of innovations in terms of raw ingredients, uh, finished products, and also in terms of design. So, um, in, the, in Indonesia, uh, as the Mr. Ambassador said, that in Indonesia, the export of uh, raw materials and also the export of herbals and also cosmetics is very low in comparison with other nations in the region. Uh, and then in Indonesia, we have issues of imported. We are very dependent on the imported raw materials that we are using in product. So that's, that's a challenge since 1999 that we are trying to, to have uh, our own locally made uh, raw materials so, don't, so we don't really uh, depend on the imported uh, raw materials from abroad. Yeah, so this is backed up by this Matatilar Innovation Center. So basically the, uh, at the Matatilar Innovation Center is the heart of our activities. So all the research, all the innovations came from these uh, institutions. And this institution is responsible to grasp all the global trends and infuse it with local culture and empowered by local biodiversities of natural ingredients potentials to create uh, uh, innovations 
that is what we call is innovation that is uniquely Indonesia. Yeah. So to create innovation that is uniquely Indonesia, we focus only two things that this country has to offer, two potentials of this country, which is number one is Indonesia natural richness. As you can see, Indonesia is a uh, contains of 17,000 islands and 300 uh, ethnicities. If you combine the natural resources uh, out of Indonesia and you combine uh, the, the forest diversity and then uh, the sea diversity, biodiversity, then you can say that Indonesia is number one in terms of natural richness. Yeah. And we are focusing on that, on how to deliver, on how to capitalize on the natural resources of Indonesia. And then the second thing that we are, we are focusing fo focus in is the, uh, the culture. As I mentioned, Indonesia is, consists of 300 uh, ethnicities. So uh, each ethnicity uh, is isolated by uh, you know, islands because we have 17,000 islands. So each ethnicity has its own recipe for health and also for beauty recipe. So that we can say, uh, this is Indonesia. Yeah, as you can see, uh, we divide into islands. So every single ethnicity has its own, uh, what you call it, the beauty and health recipe. So if we, let's say, if we combine the bio-marine potentials and the cultural know-how or local indigenous science, that we can say that we can have 2 million health and beauty recipes waiting for us to explore in scientific uh, methods. So uh, our, our focus in innovation is really on these two potentials, biomarine diversity and also the cultural know-how of our ancestors. And we prove it through uh, methodologies that is scientific. So in terms of developing the products and developing the raw materials, uh, we believe in uh, four pillars, which is green science, uh, green resources on how we acknowledge the resources and how we uh, map the resources, green development, green process to provide a green output. So, and then we have also um, safety and efficacy on raw, raw materials and also the finished product. So, meaning that all the products that we are launching or all the ingredients that we are selling worldwide is proven by clinical studies. So all of our uh, scientists in safety and efficacy has been certified for safety and efficacy by uh, association in Belgium. So we have three people uh, certified from Belgium. Yeah, yeah, for to doing efficacy and, and uh, safety research and testing. Yeah. So if you can see, this is not, okay. So what we are developing is we are developing uh, a lot of ingredients, a lot of ingredients from the tips of Sumatra until the tips of Papua. We're doing a, a lot of explorations uh, for 20 years. And we just found a lot of uh, patent that we can patent uh, in terms of ingredients. For example, milam in Aceh, and then uh, what do you call it? Uh, Biji pala pala is not made in uh, Maluku, etc. So we go to this uh, province. We do a research uh, of the potential herbal that we want to explore. And then once we found any property phytochemi uh, phytochemical that we want to use, then we, we do a lot of uh, uh, patent, yeah. Uh, for example, this one, we do a lot of publications. So Matatila Group is more like a university. Yeah, once, once we found any ingredients that is have a potential for health and beauty, we do a lot of publications research. This is just to, to guard Indonesian uh, intellectual property so that uh, others cannot claim uh, the properties from other countries. Yeah. So we do, we do a lot of publications, international research publications, and we do a lot of patents. We now have 12 patents, international patents, and 30 uh, local patents. So this is all uh, cosmetic ingredients, and it's a benefit for herbal, either for herbal or for uh, beauty purposes. 
in all the formulations, uh, we believe in clean beauty. In fact, uh, I'm one of the pioneers for the clean beauty movement in Europe, uh, along together with uh, a lot of uh, cosmetic companies that believe uh, that we need to be transparent to our uh, consumers. We launched a clean beauty movement. Now it's big in Europe uh, since 2011. So all of our products, we, we now we're producing uh, around 1,400 uh, types of products, and all the product is uh, free from are free from harmless chemicals such as uh, paraben, MCIT, uh, BHT, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And also because we are one of the because we are the largest Muslim country in the world, so that we are very serious uh, in terms of the halal standard. As you can see in the video profile that we, we have, we are the only company that uh, got a grade A certification from MOE three times in the road. That is uh, one of the kind efforts by our team to ensure that uh, all the products, raw materials are halal certified. Now move on that uh, after the clean, uh, clean beauty, uh, our principle is sustainability and traceability meaning that all the ingredients have to be uh, sourced ethically and also uh, uh, source uh, can be tracked, yeah. So we have 10 acres of land, so botic, botanical gardens, consists of 650 Indonesian biodiversity collections for conservations, education for our farmers, and also do a lot of research. A lot of universities from the Netherlands already came to Indonesia to learn about uh, a lot of uh, Indonesian biodiversity and they do a lot of research in uh, Kampung Jamu Organics. Yeah. In, in our supply, uh, uh, supply chains, we, we try to do a lot of uh, what you call it, collaborations with farmers that we have three pillars in order to, to make the uh, supply chain more sustainable which is we are very transparent in terms of pricing, ethical and benefit sharings for the farmers. Uh, this is our global green, uh, this is green supply chain policy. Uh, we train the farmers, we do a fair trade with them, transparency in pricing, and also uh, we directly, uh, what do you call it, collaborate with the, with the farmers to ensure the tractability of our uh, ingredients and the standard of the ingredients. Yeah. So this is a win-win uh, situations, uh, the company ensuring the sustainable, sustainable su supply while reducing cost, and the farmers have uh, standard quality, increased uh, standard quality, uh, standard products, get more incomes and increase their welfare. So this is the one of the key, that's a lot of uh, middlemen in Indonesia that is, uh, ruining the supply chain. So we try to, to be direct with the farmers so that the farmers can have more. This is uh, the, our network of farmers. This is 400 farmers, meaning 400 networks of farmers. Right now we have uh, around 1,600 farmers already joining us for the supply of the raw ingredients of our products. And all the products, raw materials, and also uh, finished products are, are already uh, accordance to the EU standard and also ASEAN standard. And one of the certification that we have is EcoCert uh, for organic certified. Uh, next, this year, we're gonna move to Cosmo, Cosmos for the European organic certified. And also for the raw materials, we have uh, also European standard, ECOFADIS. ECOFADIS is a, a body that measures the supplier sustainability ratings. So in order to sell uh, raw, raw materials, for example, to Europe, we need uh, certifications for uh, ECOFADIS and all the products, raw materials that we send to Europe already according to ECOFADIS uh, standards. Yeah. Now this is, uh, I will, I will go through several of our uh, raw materials that we export to more than 200 countries. Uh, this one is very unique. This is called the uh, Ilipe butter from uh, West, Cali West of Borneo, uh, West Kalimantan. 
So this is a butter, uh, usually for food and also for cosmetic applications. Uh, and it's uh, in Borneo. Uh, and it's called in Indonesia, it's Tengkawang butter. Yeah. So this butter is very unique. Uh, it's uh, for, for moisturizing, it's very good. Uh, this is our research uh, telling us that the uh, Elite butter lasts longer than the other well-known, uh, let's say butter, let's say shea butter. So although the, the moisturizer at the first is not uh, it's not comparable with the well known, but in terms of longer, uh, in terms of times, uh, Elipe butter is longer, sustaining the hydration effect on the skin. Yeah. So this is uh, we collaborate with a community in West Borneo. This is our community, basically local community. They 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 gather all the Elipe nuts. And they do a lot of um, uh, uh, post harvesting for us. This is the nuts, the Ilipe nuts butter that uh, uh, for drying. Yeah. This is the community that we are the farmers that we are empower. Yeah. So this is unique. Um, a lot of women, because according to the culture in West Borneo. The, uh, the person who can uh, collect the nuts is only women. So there's a lot of women uh, empowerment involved in this process of Ilipe butter. Yeah. And number two is candle nut oil. Yeah, it's from the East Nusa Tenggara Island. It's very unique. This is uh, uh, a plant, uh, it's, a, it's, a, well, yeah, it's a plant yeah, that can have uh, hair growth. Probably His Excellency and me needs a uh, you know, hair growth and also hair darkening, yeah. So this is a uh, high demand now in, in, in the cosmetic world. A lot of uh, our clients really, uh, you know, buy into this concept of natural hair growth and also hair darkening. Yeah. So this is all the uh, scientific explanation, yeah. So if you can see, this is our research in vitro that the uh, what do you call it? Uh, the candle nut oil is uh, inhibiting the activity of hair loss, yeah, causing in enzyme. So the enzyme is suppressed by this uh, candle nut oil. Uh, this is in vitro data uh, that we, we do a research uh, around uh, three years of research of, of finding the, the right concentrations of, of this particular raw materials. Next, we have false daisy. This is also very nice very nice uh, herbal remedy yeah, a herbal remedy for the uh, skin uh, hair growth and also skin disease yeah so this this uh, false daisy we use a lot in indonesia for gray hair so uh, right now in europe especially there's a trend of you know how to dye your hair naturally for example so this false daisy can 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 help uh, uh, our consumers to, to prevent premature gray hair, yeah. This is the data, for example, this is one of our research. Uh, for example, this uh, scientific data said that um, it's, uh, it's better in comparison to, to the other uh, properties, yeah. Uh, this is unique. The third is the waste utilization. So in terms of sustainability concept, we need to, to find something that is, uh, uh, sustainable yeah so no no waste so uh, this is for example this is a uh, coffee peri cups so this is the the cups of coffee uh, the peri cups of coffee so we know that the the, the, the peri cups of coffee uh, really um, have the benefit for antioxidants yeah? and also for uh, replacing the scrubs R right now in the industry a lot of the uh, Manufacturing using uh, plastic for scrubbing, but now uh, for cherry, uh, it can be replaced by cherry, uh, cherry uh, cup, coffee cup. Yeah, this is uh, from Palu. Yeah, a lot of uh, uh, coffee from Palu is very good because uh, antioxidants, alcohol, alkaloids, and caffeines, yeah? anticyanins and tannins for hydrations and also for uh, brightening. Not, uh, not only that, we also de develop uh, natural colorants. So a lot of uh, 
cosmetics or uh, uh, using a lot of chemicals to, 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 to make their lipsticks, their eyeshadows. Uh, there is an ambition in our team to create uh, a color cosmetic that is from natural colorants. So this can be also used for cosmetic and also used for food uh, colorants. So butterfly pea, a lot of uh, Clitoria ternatea is from uh, ternate. We develop it into uh, colorant uh, from uh, flowers. Yeah. Butterfly pea. For reddish color, we have sapan wood. Yeah. Uh, this is sa apa namanya? secang. Uh, Indonesia known as secang. It's for uh, reddish color. Yeah, a lot of uh, and this is just to glance uh, to you all after this we can have the discussions this is all, all the extract that we are having here that is ready for the european market yeah we have around 60 60 extract already uh, researched the efficacy already have the standard of asean and also uh, european standard that is ready uh, for uh, entering the European and American markets. Yeah. A lot of uh, extracts. Many. <laughs> so um, this is, this is uh, one of the example of the collaborations uh, to sell Indonesian exotic raw materials to the world. We collaborate with one of the largest uh, chemical company in Europe, actually, uh, Clarion, based in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, to sell ingredients, uh, active ingredients, to a lot of uh, cosmetic companies around the world. Right now, we collaborate uh, 12 ingredients that is uh, distributed to almost 200 countries worldwide. This is the video of uh, that kind of collaborations that we're having with Clarians in Switzerland. Oops, wait, 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 wait. Okay, here we go. Indonesia is blessed with abundant natural resources, so pure, so precious. And we explore the richness of our natural resources and develop them into valuable products for the world. And that is only the first step. We keep systematically searching the biochemistry and bioresources found across the Indonesian archipelago for the creation of commercially valuable extracts. Developing these into standardized plant extracts that are safe and efficaciously proven for application in cosmetics. Based on the National Geographical identity, we can guarantee traceability of all resources. We select sustainable and environmentally friendly bioresources that are cultivated by multiple cropping and organic principles. This process runs smoothly by collaborating intensively with farmers. We provide them with training programs for good organic farming practices and for post-harvest treatment processing to ensure the best quality. Ya, saya petani kumis kucing sudah lama sebetulnya di kumis kucing hampir 15 tahun. Dulu produksi kumis kucing saya rendah dan harga pun juga rendah. Sejak ada pembinaan dari Marta Tilar, produksi kumis kucing saya meningkat dan harga pun juga tinggi. Selain kumis kucing kami kirim ke Marta Tilar, juga kumis kucing kami kepake buat ke luar negeri. Abdi petani kumis kucing, sepeninggalan suami Abdi, Alhamdulillah saat harus dibina ke Marta Tilar, penghasilan Abdi lebih saya. Hutang Abdi lunas, Abdi biasanya kalah kenguran kali, di ke Universitas UNJ. Besides technical training, we also conduct community development programs, specifically women empowerment programs. Through a scholarship program, girls from marginal families are trained as professional spa therapists. With the security of employment, they enjoy a better welfare and the pride of being part of the team of a big enterprise 
this professionalism is recognized globally. And we continue to step up to develop superior quality products who meet the global international standards of ISO 9001-2015 and ISO 14001-2015. We comply with the domestic good manufacturing practices and adhere to the halal standard as quality assurance for halal health and beauty care. And this is our biggest step, the presence of Planta Sans Berto, an exotic and unique product created from the natural ingredients found in the region's biodiversity. Together with Clarion, a world-leading company that focuses on the creation of value through innovative, sustainable solutions for customers from many industries. We aim to contribute to Clarion's portfolio for the professional beauty and personal care products in local communities and the global market. Planta Sans Berto, naturally brought to you by Clarion and Martina Berto. So that's uh, the video of introductions of uh, how we collaborate with the global company in terms of sustainability of raw materials and also traceability of the sources and also empowerment of the community. So uh, it's all the whole nine yard, you know, uh, sustainability issues, traceability, standard, uh, standard uh, raw materials, and also have the impact of uh, good welfare for our farmers here in Indonesia. Next will be the one of the example is uh, the first uh, in the world, I think, halal and also EcoCert certified products as innovations. There is uh, a products, a skincare uh, based on ingredients uh, found in Singaraja in the north part of Bali. Uh, we can see a lot of uh, now uh, grapes, uh, wine plantations in Bali, and we, we found that the the grape seeds have a good antioxidants for the skin, and we try to formulate it for export market is uh, the first in the world, EcoCert and Halal Cosmetics, uh, that is clean beauty. Uh, so this basically, uh, in terms of the grape seed oil, uh, contains OPC, uh, a good powerful antioxidant that is 20 times greater than vitamin E, 50 times greater than vitamin C, and it's very good uh, to to, uh, to prevent anti-aging. This is all the data, all the packaging itself is re recyclable and all the, uh, what do you call it, the, the tin, uh, the, the ink that is used for the packaging is also uh, from a green resources from a, from a plant, yeah, source the, the sources from the plant. So everything is already, uh, what do you call it, organically uh, ready. This is in terms of efficacy, in terms of efficacy center uh, uh, test, uh, in terms of firm, firm, firmness, fine lines, moisturizer, and lightening is uh, also very good. Another example is this Sari Ayu Eco Nature. This is the ingredients we, we got it from uh, pomegranate fruit in uh, Matang Siantar in North Sumatra that contains a high anthocyanin potential, uh, uh, very potent antioxidant have a good source of zinc, iron, etc. needed for, for anti-aging. And we combine it with sea lettuce from the Nusa Tenggara Timur, NTT, uh, that is the, uh, known for the, uh, what do you call it, uh, seaweed from, from NTT called the sea lettuce yeah, to, to generate collagens and moisturize the skin. Yeah, in terms of efficacy, uh, in, in, in P4 test, there's also the moisture line is very, very nice. Yeah. And then uh, another example, for example, is uh, hijab. Yeah. Hijab uh, in Indonesia, this uh, Indonesia is very humid, 80% of humidity, and it's very hot. So in terms of our consumer who are wearing hijab, there are three main problems. Number one is dandruff, hair fall, and odor. So we create the first... Uh, hijab shampoo in 2010 uh, to answer the needs of our consumers using Indonesian active ingredients. For example, urang aring, uh, lidah buaya, uh, 
uh, chili, cabai rawit, for example, celery, and etc. Yeah. In terms of efficacy for dendraf, reduced by four weeks significantly. Yeah. Hair fall, also the number of hair is uh, also reduced significantly in four weeks. And this is the strength of the hair is also strengthened uh, within uh, four weeks of application of the shampoo. Yeah. And then uh, what we're trying to do is not only um, talking about raw ingredients, but we also focus on the, our culture. So every year uh, since 1987, we launched uh, trend colors of cosmetics inspired by local province of Indonesia. Uh, last year, we, uh, we are innovating a concept inspired by Nusa Tenggara in which in this uh, formulations of lip cream, uh, we use a hybrid uh, natural, uh, natural colorant and also chemical colorant. So this is uh, the Exotica Keindahan Zumba. Last year. Menginspirasi perempuan Indonesia untuk berani bereksplorasi. So the color inspired, inspired by the local culture Baru, in Sari Ayu Color Trend Sumba. Inspirasi Sumba. Multifungsi make-up, lip NG, untuk lipstick, dan blush on. Ringan dan lembut, dengan inovasi stay moist avocado lock. And the avocado also resource from uh, Sekali usap, warna langsung on, dan menutup sempurna. Jadikan perempuan Indonesia auto cantik sepanjang hari di setiap eksplorasi dirinya. Auto cantik dengan inspirasi Sumba dari Sari Ayu Marta Tilaan. Right. And then uh, of course um, in terms of uh, the internet era right now uh, because of the use of Internet is very uh, common nowadays, uh, and Indonesia is one of the largest uh, internet economy uh, in ASEAN. Uh, it means that the business uh, around community is very uh, easy and very smooth nowadays. So there is a lot of uh, independent brands in Indonesia, likewise in Europe and US, a lot of uh, independent brands, small smaller brand that is uh, born within the last five years, for example, in the world. For example, uh, like um, uh, Rihanna, the, the, the singer, have the Fenty Beauty. Uh, this also happened in Indonesia, a lot of uh, young people producing their own brands. Uh, and now, uh, in, uh, as the one of the oldest uh, cosmetic company in Indonesia, we also support a uh, local uh, new entrepreneur. And now we control 80% of the markets of the independent brands that is born in Indonesia. For example, all the artists from Indonesia, uh, Ashanti, this uh, Usi Susilo Solawati, and many more, Lunamaya, etc., is producing through our facility at PT Sedevindo. That is a, a company that is responsible for tall and uh, tall manufacturing. Yeah. For example, this is new launch uh, this year. This new entrepreneur create second date uh, brand that is, uh, uh, you know, sold out within two minutes yeah, of uh, in, in in internet. Yeah, so it's very huge success for young entrepreneurs in Indonesia, and we are supporting them in terms of research and in terms of producing the the cosmetics. Yeah, this is an example of uh, independent brands in Indonesia that is working with us. Yeah. And it's all produced by PT Sedevindo. And PT Sedevindo right now have uh, both local brand and also international brand clients. New Skin, for example, New Skin is an American uh, Salt Lake City based uh, MLM. We support also a British company, PZ Cousins. We produce for them. We, we also support uh, Mandem uh, from Japan for the productions of uh, personal care and cosmetics. Uh, this is uh, uh, Unilever also joining us last year by producing Rexona and all the deodorant uh, products. Uh, Disney, 
MWE and many more. Yeah, we produce, uh, they produce with us at PTC de Findo. Yeah. This is independent brands that also work for us. And now for the COVID era, I know that COVID is changing the industry forever, the beauty industry, for example, especially. Uh, the, the, the global beauty industry experiencing minus growth. Uh, as you can see in the, in the chart, you know, it's very deep yeah, uh, in terms of cosmetic industry worldwide. This is one, this one is from the US industry for beauty. So because there's a shifting in consumer demand of uh, the products right now, uh, the consumers are moving toward, you know, the more personal hygienic concerns and also health awareness. Their health awareness is very high due to COVID-19. So we are preparing new opportunity for us. We're preparing an innovation platform. That is number one is holistic solution for COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. Number one, we, we formulate a herbal supplement we call Jamu, immune booster. We produce also antiseptic products, hand, hand sanitizer, hand wash, hand spray, and et cetera. And also we produce nourishing products, uh, skin, skin friendly hand sanitizer, sun care, skin microbiome friendly and uh, affordable price. Yeah, for example, this is uh, our dry clean using uh, uh, lemongrass oil to prevent the bacteria, to kill the bacteria. And then uh, along with the using of the mask, a lot of people are experiencing a breakout in pimples. Uh, so uh, we also provide uh, acne care for, for our consumers here in Indonesia. Also, of course, uh, uh, anti-aging because uh, although the cosmetic industry, the decorative or the lipstick, the eyeshadow experiencing a downturn, but the skincare sector is stable and also growing. So. We, we have a lot of uh, uh, skincare products for anti-aging, for brightening, and also for moisturizer. And this is, we just launched uh, herbal uh, jamu, uh, ready to drink herbal formulations uh, to activate your immunity, your immune uh, uh, level in your body. So this is basically, uh, it's basic, or, uh, it's based on the ancestors, uh, on the sorry, on the indigenous knowledge of our people, but also research through the scientific uh, clinical studies. Hari ini pastikan imunmu aktif terus. Baru Berto Imunku, imunomodulator alami, praktis sekali teguh. Tiga aksi cepatnya menjaga imun kita setiap hari. Berto Imun, kerjakan aktivitas imun tanpa pahit. Just drink it three times a day, and your immune level will be uh, very good. Uh, second, uh, secondary is uh, secondary uh, innovation platform that we have is multifunctional products, economically priced and uh, and economic size and also affordable price. For example, this is one uh, quick and fresh is the uh, very 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 affordable uh, hand sanitizer and hand spray, hand wash. Yeah, we launched in the market to just to fill the very affordable uh, segmentation. This one we just launched uh, two days ago. We create a formulations that is uh, transfer proof at, uh, from your uh, mask, yeah. So that we create a lipstick that is no no transfer in your uh, mask, uh, surgical mask. Yeah. normal gini, masker wajib. Tapi tutup cantik juga penting. Kalau aku pilih Sari Ayu New Norm. Teksturnya super lembut, lebih cepat ke blend di bibir. Dan yang paling penting, anti nempel. Bikin so, aku ladies, selalu yeah, tampil on. Multifungsi so juga loh. Bisa dan gak over budget. Sari Ayu New Norm, New Makeup. Non-transfer, lipstick. Yeah. And also lastly, we for the affordable, because along with the pandemic, I think economic recession will be on the way. It is already happening now in Indonesia. So we create a very, very affordable cosmetics 
to really answer the, the demand of our consumers that is uh, lower price, yeah, at the lower price. So basically that is our uh, company behind the scene. And uh, I'd like to thank you for, for listening and enjoy the, the, the factory tour so that you can understand uh, our vision and also our value that we want to continue to uh, uh, establish in our uh, company. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Kilala Kilar, for a beautiful presentation. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, Mr. Kilala mentioned before, I would like to invite you on a virtual tour to visit Marta Tila Art Group. So, please enjoy. Ya, boleh banget, Tuan Feli. 
Ya, kalau kita berbicara tentang PT Martina Gento TBK, uh, pastinya tidak lepas dari perjalanan hidup Ibu Dr. Martha Tilaar. Nah, Ibu Dr. Martha Tilaar ini adalah founder and chairwoman dari Martha Tilaar Group. Dan PT Martina Gento TBK adalah salah satu unit bisnis di Martha Tilaar Group. Jadi saya lihat selepas Ibu Dr. Martha Tilaar menyelesaikan studinya di Amerika, sekaligus mendampingi suami tercinta, Ibu Dr. Martha Tilaar akhirnya kembali ke Indonesia untuk mempercantik perempuan Indonesia lewat salon yang didirikannya di Tosari Menteng pada tahun 1970. Salon tersebut didirikan di garasi rumah orang tuanya dengan ukuran 4 x 5 meter. Dan ini adalah cikal bakal dari Manta Biladuk yang saat ini berusia 50 tahun, Seli. Wow, usianya sudah 50 tahun ya, saya. Benar, Seli, dan tentunya tidak mudah untuk mencapai titik ini. Dan ini semua bisa tercapai berkat insting bisnis, ketekunan, dan semangat ibu dokter Manta Biladuk dalam mengembangkan bisnisnya hingga saat ini. Wow, berarti usia Manta Biladuk ini sudah memasuki usia 50 tahun ya. Dan usia 50 tahun ini adalah usia yang sudah matang bagi perusahaan lokal ya saya ya benar sekali Sally seiring berjalannya waktu PT Martina Beto TBK mempunyai pabrik lainnya salah satunya yang berlokasi di Pulau Aya fokus memproduksi kemasan dan ada lagi yang berlokasi di Cikarang menjadi satu dengan kampung jamu organik yang fokus memproduksi macam-macam herbal lalu ada juga pabrik sebagai tool manufacturing yaitu PT Serifindo yang berlokasi di Bekasi Oke, saya jadi berarti PT Martina Beto TBK ini memiliki empat pabrik ya, saya. Benar, saya. Oke, mungkin banyak juga yang ingin tahu brand dan apa saja sih yang dihasilkan di PT Martina Beto TBK, Sa. PT Martina Beto TBK sudah menghasilkan banyak sekali brand-brand berkualitas yang tentunya dikenal banyak orang. Brand yang dihasilkan di antaranya Sariayu Martina Tilaat, Biopas Martina Tilaat, Caring Colors, Caring by Biopas. Dewi Srispa, Casey Marta Pilaar, Mira Bella Kosmetik, Rudi Hadi Suwano Kosmetik, dan lain-lain. Pastinya nama-nama yang sudah tidak asing lagi di telinga masyarakat Indonesia dan bahkan dunia. Karena memang produk Marta Pilaar Group ini sudah uh, dipasarkan juga di berbagai negara, ya di mancanegara, contohnya di Brunei, kemudian di Malaysia, di Singapura, bahkan sampai dengan Timur Tengah. PT Martina Beto TBK memasarkan produk yang melalui saluran-saluran pemasaran baik general trade maupun modern trade. Juga produk-produknya dipasarkan secara online melalui Mata Gila Shop Online dan juga marketplace lainnya. Nah, bagaimana aktivitas research untuk produk-produk yang diproduksi di PT Martina Beto TBK? Sa? Nah, ini yang istimewa. Mata Tilado mempunyai divisi research bernama Mata Tilado Innovation Center atau MTIC. Di MTIC ini dilakukan berbagai penelitian terkait produk-produk yang dihasilkan oleh PT Martina Berto TBK. Sasa, saya mau tahu juga dong terkait program marketingnya seperti apa. Nah, banyak banget aktivitas yang dilakukan oleh PT Martina Beto TBK. Antara lain, kami rutin mengadakan kelas kecantikan atau BT class, dan juga kami mengadakan handsome class loh. Di masa pandemi ini, kami juga rutin mengadakan kelas kecantikan secara online. Intinya, melalui tim yang dilatih khusus, PT Martina Beto TBK memberikan edukasi ke banyak pihak terkait produk-produk kosmetik berkualitas dan cara mengaplikasikannya dengan benar. Marketing juga banyak mensupport aktivitas-aktivitas seni, budaya, pendidikan, dan aktivitas lainnya. Wow, menarik sekali untuk mengetahui lebih banyak lagi. Terima kasih ya, Sasa. Sebentar lagi saya akan mengajak Bapak, Ibu, teman-teman untuk melihat lebih dekat perjalanan perusahaan kami. Bapak, Ibu, dan teman-teman, saya akan mengajak ke mini museum. Untuk itu langsung ikuti saya yuk. Ibu Dr. Marta Tilaar mengajarkan kepada kami, karyawan-karyawatinya tentang filosofi Jitu. Jitu dalam ejaan lama adalah disiplin, jujur, iman atau inovatif, tekun, dan ulet. Filosofi inilah yang ditanamkan kepada kami untuk mencapai keberhasilan. Bapak, 
ibu dan teman-teman kita sudah berada di lorong untuk menuju ke menu museum dan sekarang ini kita sudah berada di lorong Puri Cirebon ya banyak sekali di sini ada beberapa macam lukisan yang dilukis biasanya kalau lukisan dilukis di atas kanvas ini lukisan yang dilukis di atas kaca dimana lukisan ini adalah hasil karya dari pelukis ataupun pengrajin yang berasal dari Cirebon Ya, ini menunjukkan bahwa Ibu Dr. Marta Vilaar selalu mencintai dan juga selalu melestarikan kebudayaan yang ada di Indonesia. Kalau kita lihat di sini lukisan kaca ini ya, uh, temanya adalah batik mega mendung ya dan tokoh di dalamnya adalah tokoh para pewayangan. Dan kita sudah berada di pintu untuk memasuki mini museum dari Ibu Dr. Marta Vilaar. Selamat datang di Mini Museum Ibu Dr. Mata Tilaar. Di bagian depan museum ini ini terdapat arca Kendedes. Selain arca Kendedes, beberapa arca di Mini Museum ini hendak menggambarkan filosofi kecantikan seutuhnya dari seorang perempuan, yaitu kecantikan luar dan dalam. Digambarkan seperti Dewi Saraswati yang mempunyai empat lengan. Demikian pula perempuan hendaknya selain dikaruniai paras yang cantik dan terawat, perempuan juga harus memiliki keimanan, kepandaian, budi pekerti, dan harus mampu menjadi pilar bagi keluarga serta mampu beradaptasi dengan lingkungannya. Lukisan-lukisan perempuan yang ada di mini museum ini menunjukkan bahwa sejatinya perempuan diciptakan cantik, seturut dengan adat budaya masing-masing. Dalam mini museum ini terdapat koleksi Bu Marta Vilaar terkait atribut yang melekat pada perempuan yang menambah kecantikannya. Berikut ini adalah piranti piranti yang digunakan di Bu Marta Vilaar pada masa-masa awal untuk meramu produk kecantikan. Berikut adalah foto-foto Ibu Dr. Mata Tilaat ketika merintis usahanya. Dimulai pada tahun 1970, awal usaha Ibu Dr. Mata Tilaat dimulai dengan salon kecantikan 4 x 6 meter. Dari sana, pada tahun 1974 berkembang menjadi sekolah kecantikan bernama Puspita Marta. Satu tahun berjalan kemudian mereka berpisah karena perbedaan visi dan Ibu Dr. Mata Tilaar akhirnya melanjutkan untuk belajar ramuan kecantikan dengan Eang Almarhum Gusti Putri di Keraton Yogyakarta pada tahun 1979. Dan pada tahun yang sama, Ibu Dr. Mata Tilaar akhirnya meluncurkan produk pertamanya bernama Sari Ayu Marta Tilaar. Dan inilah produk pertama dari Sari Ayu Marta Tilaar. Bertambahnya antusias masyarakat dalam menerima produk lokal kecantikan pertama di Indonesia. Pada tahun 1981, Marta Tilaar menggandeng Kalbe Pharma untuk mendirikan pabrik pertama Martina Berto. Nah, sesuai dengan filosofi yang ada di Jitu, yaitu inovasi, Marta Tilaar Group, juga melakukan pembaruan terhadap formula dan juga kemasan produk kecantikan yang sudah eksis. Bukan hanya itu saja, Marta Tilaar Group juga mengangkat kekayaan alam dan kebudayaan Indonesia dengan mengeluarkan tren warna setiap tahunnya dan itu mengacu kepada tren warna dunia. Dengan pertamanya animo masyarakat terhadap produk kosmetik lokal pada tahun 1986, Marta Tilar Group akhirnya membuka pabrik kedua Martina Berto yang sedang Anda kunjungi saat ini. Almari Ukir ini merupakan koleksi Ibu Marta Tilaar. Ini merupakan hadiah dari Paku Buwono 10 Surakarta yang di dalamnya berisi gelas, piring, dan juga perlengkapan-perlengkapan yang terbuat dari kuningan dan juga keramik. Dan ini merupakan foto-foto kegiatan pelestarian budaya. Sari Ayu merupakan produk resmi dalam peristiwa syarat sejarah, yaitu Jumenengan Dalem Ingkang Sinuwun Sri Sultan Hamengkubuwono 10, tanggal 7 Maret 1989. Dalam perjalanannya, Sari Ayu berdedikasi untuk membangun negeri. Beragam aktivitas ikut disupport Sari Ayu, antara lain Paskibraka Nasional, Jember Fashion Carnival, 
Gandrung Sebu, Miss Indonesia, Miss Or, dan masih banyak lagi. Dan suatu kebanggaan bahwa Sari Ayu Mata Dilaar dipercaya pada ajang bergensi internasional di mana Sari Ayu Mata Dilaar menjadi official makeup partner di ajang Asian Games dan juga Asian Para Games 2018. Ini adalah hasil karya pengrajin kecil, di mana Ibu Dr. Mata Tilaar selalu mengapresiasi para pengrajin kecil. Ini merupakan foto kegiatan khusus tingkat nasional dan juga internasional yang diikuti oleh Mata Tilaar. Salah satunya adalah lomba face and body painting di Athena. Mata Tilaar mendapatkan juara satu dengan makeup artis yaitu Ibu Pingkang Tilaar. Kereta ini merupakan duplikat atau tribuan dari kereta kencana Keraton Yogyakarta. Pada awal berdirinya perusahaan Marta Tilaar, kereta ini senantiasa digunakan dalam berbagai kegiatan promosi sebagai image kosmetika Sari Ayu. Berikut ini adalah publikasi kegiatan dari Marta Tilaar. Selain memproduksi produk-produk kecantikan, Ibu Dr. Mata Silaar juga menuangkan ilmunya dalam bentuk buku and magazine. Setelah peluncuran Sari Ayu Mata Silaar, produk kedua Ibu Dr. Mata Silaar adalah menjelim Apsari Lidah Buaya, di mana brand ambasadornya yaitu Eyang Titik Puspa. Selanjutnya, Ibu Dr. Mata Silaar mulai melengkapi perawatan harian dan juga mingguannya seperti pembersih, moisturizer, dan produk-produk lainnya. Ini merupakan foto kegiatan pelestarian budaya. Yang pertama, perkawinan Ibu Wulan Tilaar dan Bapak Kunto melestarikan adat mangku negara dalam pernikahan modern. Kemudian, malam gemilang warna kecantikan tahun 1996. Kunjungan Ratu Kecantikan Dunia, Miss Talia, Telenovela Star, Christine, Melrose Play Star, Linda Evangelista, Supermodel. Selain produk Sari Ayu Mata Tilaar, PT Martina Beto TBK juga meluncurkan produk-produk lainnya. Ada Biokos, Belia, PSC, Dewi Srispa, Rudi Hadiswana Kosmetik, Caring Color, Caring by Biocos, Mirabella Cosmetic, Solusi Organik. Berbagai penghargaan dari dalam maupun luar negeri diterima Ibu Dr. Mata Tilaar dan PT. Martina Beto TBK atas prestasi dan dedikasinya dalam bidang kosmetik. Bapak, Ibu, dan teman-teman, kita sudah selesai berkeliling di Mini Museum Ibu Dr. Mata Tilaar. Selanjutnya kita akan melihat seperti apa program CSR tepatnya di Kampung Jam Organik yang ada di Cikarang dan rekan saya Desi akan menemani Bapak Ibu dan teman-teman di Kampung Jam Organik yang ada di Cikarang. Silakan Desi. Hai Sally, terima kasih Sally. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Shalom Om Swastiastu, Namo Buddhaya, Salam Kebajikan. Salam sejahtera untuk kita semuanya. Selamat datang di Kampung Jam Organik Marta Siladro. Bersama saya Desi, dia akan menemani Bapak, Ibu, dan teman-teman semuanya untuk berkeliling dan juga mengenal lebih jauh mengenai Kampung Jamu Organik Marta Bilandro. Walaupun dilakukan secara virtual, saya berharap kunjungan ini bisa bermanfaat untuk Bapak, Ibu, dan teman-teman semuanya. Sudah siap? Yuk, kita mulai! adalah jalan setapak yang menghubungkan bagian depan kampung jamu organik ke bagian yang lebih dalam. Jika Bapak dan Ibu sekalian berkunjung pagi hari, akan mendapatkan suasana yang begitu segar. 
dan juga kicau burung yang bersahut-sahutan. Tentu saja sangat kontras dengan suasana perkotaan pada umumnya. Namun jika berkunjung pada siang hari pun, matahari tidak begitu menyengat karena pepohonan yang sangat rimbun sekali menghalau sinar matahari. Di kampung jamu organik didirikan beberapa bangunan. Sebagian dibangun dengan arsitektur khusus. Seperti rumah Manado ini dibangun dengan arsitek kayu bertingkat dan terinspirasi dari rumah adat Manado. Saat ini saya masih berada di rumah Manado. Di bagian atasnya digunakan untuk tempat beristirahat. Selain itu juga digunakan sebagai musalah untuk umat muslim yang ingin menjalankan ibadah. Dan untuk area di bawahnya ini difungsikan sebagai kedai. Kedai makanan sehat tepatnya dan bisa dibuka juga untuk umum. Seperti apakah menu-menu spesial yang ada di kedai dari Kampung Jamu Organik? Kita akan langsung saja berbincang-bincang dengan chef dari kedai Kampung Jamu Organik. Yaitu ada Mas Agus. Ini dia Mas Agus. Hai Mas Agus. Pagi Mas Agus. Jadi kita punya konsep makan sehat rumput. Ini yang kedai kami. Jadi emang satu bagian dari Kampung Jamu Organik. Dan kita itu menyajikan apa yang dimaksud konsep makan sehat rumput itu. Konsep makan sehat sebetulnya warisan dari lumpur kita ini yang mana dulu yang kita tempatnya kalau memasak itu kan menggunakan bahasa yang alami tidak memakai bumbu tidak merasa tambahan pastinya itulah tomat potong pokoknya kita nah, kita juga menu andalan kami itu kita punya nasi timbal spesial oh ada nasi timbal spesial punya nasi kecil kado atau nasi kecil toka toka itu apa sih tanaman obat kosmetik dan aroma kalau di tempat lain mungkin namanya sayuran kecil itu kan mungkin dipakai dengan kangkung, mungkin sebagainya ya kan kalau kita harus menggunakan bagian-bagian dari tanaman-tanaman obat seperti ini ya dan juga pelaut yang kita sajikan itu juga bisa kita punya namanya menu ayam gorengnya itu kita kelola kita pelihara dengan secara organisasi itu yang yang paling kita ada di sini kita sekarang juga membuat yang namanya jam-jam sedang seperti ini Pak bisa dilihat ini jadi kita memasak seperti ini ini variannya banyak kita ada kuning asem, gas kecur, sabun kebiokan, kebiokan, dan kemuk pantas yang mana setiap varian pasti punya fungsi manfaat yang berbeda buat kesehatan itu Pak terus uh, untuk operasional kita kegiatan ini jadi kita itu operasional itu di jalan kandu kasihnya dari hari Senin sampai hari Sabtu dari jam 8 pagi sampai jam 4 sore tapi tidak kemungkinan nih dari hulbut asalkan menurut sebelumnya kita juga siap naik mereka tentunya dengan penolongan tidak bisa ini itu jadi banyak sekali ya menu-menu spesial yang disajikan di kedai dari kamu jamu organik yang bisa menjadi pilihan bukan oh, cuma iya. uh, bapak ibu saja tapi rombongan tapi juga secara umum ya jadi buka untuk umum ya saat ini saya di salah satu bangunan yang disebut Joglo. Tempat ini menjadi salah satu tempat favorit para tamu ataupun undangan dari dalam negeri maupun dari luar negeri yang singgah ke kampung jamu organik. Kenapa menjadi tempat favorit? Karena kita bisa lihat pemandangan yang begitu indah dan angin yang begitu sepoi-sepoi yang menjadikan tempat ini sangat menjadi tempat favorit. Untuk mengetahui kampung jamu organik lebih jauh, kita akan berbincang-bincang dengan pimpinan kampung jamu organik, yaitu Pak Heru. Di mana ya Pak Heru? Wah, Pak Heru ada di sebelah sana. Yuk kita ke sana. Hai Pak Heru. Bapak, Ibu, dan teman-teman semuanya, saat ini saya sudah berada bersama Pak Heru, pimpinan dari Kampung Jamu ya, Organik. Hai Pak Heru, apa kabar Pak? Baik, selamat pagi, sehat selalu Pak. Ya. Ya. Pak Heru, boleh ceritakan sama kita semua di sini mengenai keistimewaan dari Kampung Jamu Organik Pak? Oke, okay. ya ini Pak ya, jadi Kampung Jamu Organik ini memang unik. Jadi di 10 hektar ini berisi sekitar 700 lebih spesies khusus tanaman, obat, kosmetik, dan aromatik di kebun ini uniknya adalah di sana beda dengan kebun yang lain dan yang yang terpenting adalah fungsi dari kebunnya akhirnya menjadi satu kebun konservasi 
kebun pelestari uh, tanaman-tanaman yang sudah hampir langka dan hampir punah ya di Indonesia ini untuk pembelajaran kepada generasi yang berikutnya kebun organik kebun jamu organik yang kita ini kan dengan kadu ini itu tempat di mana uh, orang-orang yang berkunjung bisa belajar lebih banyak mengenai tentang kekayaan alam Indonesia khususnya di tanaman-tanaman yang khas ya ini yang punya khasiat obat kosmetik dan aromatik dan kedepannya memang uh, nanti akan kita terus kembangkan kita lestarikan semua masyarakat bisa datang ke sini untuk menggali secara secara maksimal ya lebih banyak lagi tentang kekayaan alam Indonesia dan bagaimana memanfaatkannya nah di sini khasnya jadi misalnya kita nanti petik daun ini ambil tanaman ini kemudian diramu menjadi makanan dan minuman sehat yang berkhasiat untuk kita Wow, ini menarik sekali Pak Heru buat kami dan juga pasti buat masyarakat di luar sana. Ya. Pertanyaan saya adalah, apakah kampung jamu organik ini bisa dibuka untuk masyarakat? Kalaupun misalnya masyarakat mau datang ke sini, itu bagaimana caranya Pak? Ya, jadi memang kampung kebun kado ini, ya, kebun jamu organik ini memang kita didigasikan untuk alam Indonesia dan untuk masyarakat Indonesia. Jadi, ini sejak tahun 95 kita mulai merintisnya hingga saat ini ya hingga saat ini itu memang di, diberikan dibuka untuk umum silahkan semua bisa hadir ke sini untuk belajar untuk berkreasi ya untuk misalnya saya mau tanam pohon dong di sini boleh ya di sini untuk tanam pohon pohon yang mendidikasi kelompok kelompok itu bagus sekali masyarakat misalnya kelompok ibu ibu arisan kelompok tanaman mau tanaman wanita mau tanam di silahkan dan bagaimana cara kesininya cukup kontak ke kami aja janjian waktunya biar tidak crash karena banyak Pak. sehari itu bisa beberapa kelompok jadi lebih enaknya nanti kalau misalnya satu kelompok besar bisa kontak ke kami hubungi kami terus kita set waktunya baik terima kasih Pak Heru buat informasinya ya. sangat luar biasa sekali terima kasih ya. Uh, tentu saja semakin penasaran Bapak dan Ibu dan teman-teman semuanya ya. untuk langsung datang tidak secara virtual tapi langsung datang ke Kampung Jamu Organik. Ya. Terima kasih Pak. Terima kasih. Ibu. Saya akan ya. nanti kita akan ketemu lagi Pak ya. karena ya. saya akan masih uh, harus melihat banyak keindahan keindahan. Ya. Monggo silakan. Terima kasih sekali lagi Pak. Terima kasih ya salam sehat selalu Pak ya. Hai Pak Dedi. Hai Pak Desi. Apa kabar Pak? Alhamdulillah baik. Pak Desi gimana? Iya. Pak Dedi boleh sharing sama kita saat ini kita lagi berada di mana nih? Boleh. Uh, kita sekarang uh, ada di bangunan salah satu bangunan yang ada di Kampung Jamur Gani adalah penyediaan bahan baku alami. Ya. Jadi di sini itu ada beberapa seperti bahan siliak, ada beberapa sampel bahan baku, ada 10 ya. Ada 10 jenis bahan baku yang digunakan di Marfati Lalu. Sebenarnya bahan bakunya masih banyak. Ada sekitar 113 jenis bahan baku yang digunakan di Marfati Lalu. Uh, termasuk untuk bantar obat, uh, kosmetik, sama aromatik. Ya, jadi seperti itu. Tapi ini hanya merupakan hanya sebagian kecil uh, bahan-bahan baku yang nanti kita gunakan. Jadi uh, kalau ada tamu datang ke Mungjam Organik, pasti datang ke bangunan ini dan kita perlihatkan seperti ini, Mbak Desi. Oke, okay. ada salah satu tempat yang memang menarik sekali, yaitu uh, yang saya pernah dengar mengenai penanaman anggrek. Itu di sebelah mana ya, Pak Desi? Oh, anggrek sebelah sana, Mbak Desi. Ya. Jadi kebetulan kita punya sekitar ada 107, uh, 107 pot anggrek baru yang memang anggrek tersebut baru uh, apa namanya baru apa maksudnya baru datang dari hutan ya jadi belum uh, beradaptasi makanya kita uh, mencoba mencari ya kehidupan apa sih yang cocok dengan anggrek tersebut ya mau lihat anggreknya seperti apa boleh 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 kita ya. saya sangat senang sekali untuk uh, Mbak Desi ya ya, ya. Ini kita ada di Greenhouse, yaitu tempat budidaya bunga anggrek. Nah, Pak Dedi boleh sharing sama kita idenya ada Greenhouse budidaya anggrek ini apa tuh, Pak? Uh, idenya uh, berawal uh, di kita kan ada produk yang salah satunya menggunakan bahan baku bunga anggrek ya. Malahan dari beberapa anggrek ada salah satu jenis anggrek yang dinamakan Kologinai Martai. Ya, nah terus di samping itu jadi kita kerjasama dengan BPTP ya e, mengenai kebudayaan anggrek yang mana anggrek-anggrek yang pada seperti yang di belakang e, saya ini ada e, 15 jenis anggrek ya 
Nah, angker tersebut merupakan angker-angker yang baru datang dari hutan yang seperti saya bilang tadi. Jadi, tanaman-tanaman -tanam ini belum beradaptasi dulu di kampung jamu. Nah, ini umurnya kalau nggak salah sekitar 6, 6 bulan belum datang ke kampung organik. Dan Alhamdulillah, tiap minggu, hampir jam beberapa hari selalu berbunga seperti ini. Jadi, pada awalnya kan kita nggak tahu ini seperti apa pilihnya nih ya. Jadi, kita kan nggak tahu uh, mulai dari iklim, terus mengenai suhunya seperti apa. Tapi Alhamdulillah, setelah saya amati selama 6 bulan, angker-angker ini sudah bisa beradaptasi ya. Dan kecenderungan nantinya bisa dibudidayakan bahkan dikembangkan lebih banyak lagi seperti itu, Mbak Desi. Nah ini sayuran, Mbak Desi, ini beberapa macam tanaman sayuran. Sayuran tanpa bahan kimia ya, tapi rasa ini pertemuannya bagus banget nih, saya juga heran. Kadang ada sayuran, cabai rawit sampai tingginya sampai satu meter setengah itu. Pak Dedi, saat ini kita sedang di spot apa nih Pak? Kalau dilihat ini ada bacaan darah tinggi, tinggi ya. buat sensi hati, terus juga ada wasir. Ini kita lagi berada di spot apa Pak? Oh iya, kita berada di spot uh, lahan tematik juga ya. Yang mana kalau lahan ini kan banyak itu, banyak sih banyak label-label, uh, ada wasir, ada gangguan hati. Jadi ini, plot-plot ini uh, ada beberapa tanaman dalam satu plot, tapi kita tempatkan berdasarkan rumuan. Nah, jadi nanti kalau ada pengunjung datang ke Mungil Organik, kalau mereka uh, uh, ya, ataupun rajin, mereka bisa lihat, oh ini darah tinggi. Jadi, kalau untuk darah tinggi, apa sih tanamannya? Nah, tanamannya ini, Mbak, di sini. Ada pegagan, ada rumujung, ada kunyit, seledri, menira, sama temulawak, sama kunyit. Ya, jadi satu paket gitu ya. Dibilang seperti buku resep ya? Betul Dibilang banget. Ya, ya, ya. Jadi nanti kalau orang lagi ke sini bisa mencatat, Mbak, Mbak, di sini. Jadi nanti kalau satu satu saya punya uh, apa, dari Lampung sih. Oh, nyari lampung, oh tanamannya, itu nanti ada, 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 jadi lebih enak ya, seperti itu. Pak Dedi, Pak Dedi boleh jelaskan sama ya. kita di area pasca panen ini apa saja yang dilakukan? Ya, yang dilakukan di sini kita bisa belajar bagaimana penyediaan bahan baku untuk bahan jamu yang baik dan benar. Mbak Desi bisa dilihat di sana itu ada alur proses panen. Nah, ke karyawan kampung jamu sekarang lagi memproses uh, jati belanda ya. Jati belanda. Itu jati belanda ini baru kita panen. Nah, langkah yang paling awal dari proses pengeringan jati belanda adalah sortir segar. Nah, setelah disortir, baru jati belanda yang sudah layak, yang sesuai dengan e, apa namanya kriteria, baru dilakukan pencucian pada sini. Pencucian mesti tiga kali ya, nah, satu, dua, tiga dalam air yang mengalir. Nah, setelah pencucian, baru kita bisa melakukannya. Prosesnya selanjutnya adalah pengeringan. Oke, kita bisa ya. lihat ke area pengeringan. Boleh. Pak Dedi, ini adalah hasil daun jati Belanda yang tadi sudah dicuci, kemudian e, dikeringkan ya Pak Dedi ya? Ya, betul sekali. Jadi tahap selanjutnya setelah dicuci, baru kita keringkan. Nah, pengeringan daun jati Belanda itu bisa menggunakan dua cara, Mbak. Bisa menggunakan sinar matahari secara langsung, bisa menggunakan dengan oven ya. Tapi harus diingat, kalau kita menggunakan sinar matahari ya, walaupun memang murah ya, tapi jangan langsung kena sinar matahari langsung. Tapi harus ada dingin pengalaman seperti ini. Terima kasih Pak ya. Dedi. Berikutnya setelah pengeringan kita masuk ke proses apa? Kalau setelah dikeringkan, baru selanjutnya kita melakukan proses memasak. Ya. Mau lihat tempatnya? Boleh. Pengemasan, Nanti sebelah sana. Yuk. Ya, ya teman-teman kita ke pengemasan. semuanya bagaimana memilih bahan baku yang bagus supaya penyimpanannya juga bisa bertahan lama ya Betul. Pak Dedi. Pak terima kasih banyak buat ya. semua informasi yang Bapak berikan. Sama-sama Mbak Desi ya. ya. Semoga bermanfaat buat Bapak Ibu dan teman-teman semuanya. Ya. Halo Mbak Desi, halo Mbak Desi. 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 Hal
Pilar Training Center ini istimewanya apa sih Mbak? Oke, okay. sebelumnya saya mengucapkan selamat datang dulu untuk menjadi selamat datang di Mata Kilaat Training Center. Mata Kilaat Training Center ini adalah inisiasi dari Ibu Dokter Mata Kilaat yang uh, mempunyai keinginan untuk memajukan atau untuk membuat wanita-wanita Indonesia itu menjadi wanita yang tangguh, wanita yang mempunyai optimis bisa berdikari untuk cari dia ke depannya. Kalau boleh tahu ini apa nih artinya? Oke okay, baik, uh, saya mulai dari lukisan atau mulai dari senternya ini ya. Jadi mata tila training center ini merupakan simbol dari siluet seorang perempuan. Jika kakak bisa uh, apa namanya menyaksikan siluetnya itu adalah seorang perempuan yang melihat ke depan atau mempunyai jiwa optimis yang tinggi. Nah untuk simbol sendiri dia terdiri dari bunga dan daun dari melati itu melambangkan kesucian kemudian kelembutan hati serta optimis tinggi dari siluet itu sendiri Mata Tila Training Center merupakan tempat belajar untuk power five dari Mata Tila Arsalon Nespa untuk terapis-terapis profesionalnya semua berasal dari Mata Tila Training Center Wow, gitu. luar biasa sekali dari Mata Tila Training Center ini ya iya. dijelaskan oleh Mbak Desi bahwa program-programnya sangat banyak sekali Mbak ya, Desi betul. boleh saya izin untuk keliling-keliling melihat Mata Tila Training Center lebih boleh ya. kak, dengan senang hati terima silakan. kasih, yuk iya. kita jalan-jalan silakan. 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 suatu upaya ya berdiri karena upaya dari Bu Mata sendiri ya ingin melestarikan jamu di Indonesia kita tahu di Indonesia ini banyak sekali tanaman obat yang lebih dari 20 ribu spesies tanaman obat yang sebenarnya bisa dimanfaatkan ya untuk di, di masyarakat untuk memberikan kesehatan dan bukti-buktinya pun sudah cukup banyak secara empirik dari nenek moyang kita dulu terima kasih dokter ya, Jamu adalah bagian hasanah budaya Indonesia yang harus terus dilestarikan, diteliti, dan juga dikembangkan untuk kesehatan masyarakat. Saat ini, Kampung Jamu Organik melalui klinik Jamu Mata Gaar hadir untuk memenuhi kebutuhan tersebut. Saya masih berada di Kampung Jamu Organik di salah satu pabrik, yaitu PT Martina Berto TBK yang fokus memproduksi herbal. Pak Heru kita ketemu lagi. Ya. Tadi kita sudah ketemu dan saya juga sudah keliling-keliling mengeksplor di kampung jamu organik dan uh, saya ingin menanyakan kepada Bapak apakah ada pesan-pesan buat para pengunjung uh, kampung jamu organik yang sudah melakukan secara virtual ini. Ya. Terima kasih Mbak. Jadi setelah berkeliling mungkin teman-teman bisa bisa melihat bagaimana kampung jamu ini dibangun sejak tahun 95 ya dengan isinya apa aja satu hal yang 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 saya harap saya berharap bahwa kamu jamu bisa uh, menjadi inspirasi bagi teman-teman semua untuk berbuat lebih banyak kepada lingkungan terutama dalam pelestariannya karena pohon ini pohon-pohon yang ada di sini yang sudah gede-gede ini akan menjaga bumi kita untuk menjaga keberadaan air uh, menjaga iklim yang seimbang. Kalau ini semua bergerak untuk untuk lingkungan ya, ini akan menjadikan bumi kita menjadi menjadi lebih baik. Jadi tanam pohon itu uh, sudah waktunya kita kena karena di sebagian sana pohonnya ditebang maka kita mulai saat ini harus bisa menanam pohon. Dan kalau pohon itu bermanfaat maka bisa menjadikan manfaat bagi uh, kita semua di sini. Terima kasih. Sekali lagi terima kasih Pak ya. Heru sudah berkenan ya. uh, Kampung Jamu Organiknya kita datangi Terima kasih, kasih banyak Terima kasih Pak Bapak Ibu dan juga teman-teman semuanya 
Selesai sudah kunjungan virtual kita hari ini di Kampung Jamu Organik. Semoga dapat bermanfaat untuk Bapak, Ibu, dan teman-teman semuanya. Dan acara saya kembalikan kepada Kelly. Silahkan. Yeah, so that's the virtual tour of our company, Farmant Satellite Group and Kampung Jamu Organic. So uh, now we will continue with the Q&A session. And if there's anything you would like to ask or message uh, to convey, uh, you can press the right hand button or type your question in the chat column privately to the uh, event host. And for this session, I would like to invite our moderator, Mrs. Mary Astrid Indiasari, a uh, trade attaché of uh, Indonesian Embassy for Belgium, Luxembourg, and uh, European Union, and Mrs. Uh, Jessica Clarasinta, the third secretary of the Economic Function of Indonesian Embassy for Belgium, Luxembourg, and European Union. Yeah. Terima kasih, Mbak Sasa. Thank you very much, uh, Mbak Sasa, and thank you very much, Pak Kilela, for the very comprehensive presentation this morning. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mary Astrid Indriasari. I'm the trade attaché for Indonesian Embassy here in Brussels. Uh, it's very, yes, <laughs> greetings. And uh, it's very uh, happy to, to to watch, you know, the very, uh, the video of Komata Tilaar from starting from the process of production and the ingredients used by Matatra itself. It's derived from a uh, natural resource and it's protected up until now. And it's very happy to see also the, you know, the research that has been done by uh, Matatra is not only for the national need, but also for internationally level, which is done uh, uh, collaborating with several uh, university in Europe. And I might say that that's really uh, one of our way to prove that indeed Indonesia has a very uh, internationally proven for our natural cosmetic. Uh, so the, the international can be convinced by our products, which is indeed not coming from natural and indeed uh, very innovative. Uh, from the last video from the Kampung Jamu, uh, the, the plantation, it's very excited to see how, you know, coming from the natural plantation and it's becoming the natural, the herbal medicine, uh, which is well known, known well by, by our ancestor previously. And now we are trying to introduce to our generation currently. But the challenge right now to introduce for our people itself, I mean, for the Indonesian citizen itself, it's, it's not easy, right, Pak Kilala? It's, it's quite difficult to introduce and to emphasize, okay, this is our own herbal medicine. And perhaps our youngsters nowadays is not really known and doesn't really have the confidence to, to eat, to, to drink, to use the herbal medicine itself. They, they tend to, they tend to, okay. I'm trying to maybe the, the famous one or maybe that coming from the famous people or coming from the influencer that sometimes that's give the influencer for themselves. So how, perhaps if I can give you some question for maybe the first question is coming from me to you, Pak Kilala. How you see the challenges now uh, to introduce from for our people itself, for Indonesian people itself, to introduce this herbal medicine and to introduce this natural cosmetic because yeah, the challenges is coming from not only, like you mentioned before, the internet era, the globalization is very easy. The internet, the global cosmetic is coming to Indonesia is very easy too. So how you can maintain the existence of the Marta Tila itself in, in Indonesia, but also still trying to strive to the global market. Okay, Bu, okay, thank you so much for the questions. Number one, um, how to convince uh, younger generations uh, to use jamu. Spe uh, during this pandemic, uh, especially, there's a shift of uh, mentality change in our millennials and also younger uh, consumers. That they are, as I mentioned in my presentations, there's a shifting needs from, uh, from cosmetics to health and wellness. So in fact, in, uh, because of the pandemic in Indonesia, a lot of people, especially the young people, are very interested in Jamu. So that's why uh, a couple of months ago, uh, we launched a Jamu product uh, that is practical, 
to 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 aim for the younger consumers in Indonesia. This is a very happy news in spite of uh, you know the effect of the pandemic COVID-19 that uh, affect negatively affect uh, the industry but in terms of nationality in terms of, of uh, usage of jamu increasing a lot a lot of uh, my friends from uh, jamu industry also experiencing the, the same animal the same uh, reaction, positive reactions from younger consumers so um this this crisis of covid have uh, a very positive also uh, impact on the younger consumers number two there's a lot of uh, of course there's a lot of uh, competitions in terms of a lot of uh, imported products uh, that is imported to indonesia that is true and according to badan pom uh, around nine products imported products are launched every hours in indonesia so that's the that's uh, what you call it the, the legal one how about the illegal one there's a lot of illegal products also coming into indonesia so the answer for that how we sustain our uh, our business ahead of the competitions that is global that we keep on innovating and keep on being relevant to our target market so we do a lot of uh, renovations uh, innovations in terms of image in terms of packaging designs in terms of the way we communicate our products to the younger segment because the younger generations the millennials and uh, the y and the z uh, generations they also different yeah, than the pre previous generations they communicate with uh, as i can say transparency is very important for them uh, the way we we formulate our products is also safety you know safety is also concern for them and also efficacy based on the data of uh, clinical studies is also very important because nowadays you know the younger generations are very smart all the informations are available to them through the various uh, devices so we cannot do uh, a lot of uh, i'm sorry bullshitting marketing we need to really uh, being transparent uh, tested clinically and then also sustainable yeah for for the world yeah. i think that that's the answer yes okay thank you very much Pakilala. before we open the question uh to the floor to the participant perhaps we can ask one of the audience here because we have invited one of the importers of indonesian product here with us today uh may i introduce uh, ibu saradatu she's uh this is diaspora here just wait wait until okay <laughs> yes uh hello this is ibu saradatu she's one of our uh, diaspora here in in belgium she's already uh, have a long time business here in belgium uh, mainly dealing with uh, coffee previously but now she also have activity in several organic products uh, and natural uh, ingredients Perhaps if I can ask some question to you, Busara Datu. Yeah. Do you see any potential of the natural cosmetic here in, in Belgium and also in Europe? I mean, how is it you see the trend here and also for the natural ingredients here in Belgium? Thank yes. you, Ibu. Thank you, Bumeri, for the question. And thank you also for inviting me. It's a, an honor to see. And um, I'm very, very happy for you, for Marta Tilar Group, and also for you, Mr. Kilala, for reaching 50th anniversary. So that's a very big, uh, a very big success. Yes, to answer your question, Bumeri, it's actually very interesting. Uh, Europe, uh, I'm not speaking on behalf only for Belgium, but Europe is in the future for uh, cosmetic products or any other products, of course, that is natural and also organic. Uh, having said that, it doesn't mean that it would be easy to enter the market in here. There is a very big opportunity, but it has to comply to the European Union rules. Mm -hmm. And on this behalf, knowing that re the resources in, in here particularly is also, of course, limited, the approach that you did uh, from Cede Cedefindo company, from Peta Cedefindo, is I think it's very good to enter and to actually penetrate the market in Europe, especially in the European Union. Of course, you have a lot of competition, 
but the fact that we have in here, I saw that you have already so many patented ingredients, the, the patented ingredients locally and also internationally. And this is, I think, where you can actually try to enter and penetrate the market, but having to say that we come with all these resources that might be an advantage in here to have even more ingredients. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, yeah, yeah, I think that's that's very really nice. So the opportunity is there. Yes. But as we can see that European market has a very high compliance compared with, yes. I think, and the compliance is even changing rapidly yes. up until yes. now. In and a yearly basis. In yearly basis. Yes. So that will be our cha biggest challenges. But if you can see for the specific organic product itself, I mean, like Martatila R has already achieved uh, achieve some uh, several organic certification like EcoCert and also the EcoFADIS, especially yeah. for the supplier sustainability. I think that most likely uh, almost answer all of the compliance that uh, European yeah. now implement. Uh, do you see that that will be one of the, uh, you know, potential for, for the product itself? Yes. Uh, I also heard that you're mentioning that you're entering in the future with the Cosmos certification and which is yeah. going to be very attractive for European market that is in compliance with the European um, rules. Um, aside from that, I think uh, the halal certificate also is very important, uh, I think, to enter uh, the European market, knowing that we also have quite a significant amount uh, of uh, halal uh, certificate uh, users or consumers in Europe. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, thank you, Sarah, you for me. for your uh, opinion about 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 how is it the natural ingredient potential products in yes. in Europe. And okay, maybe later. Yeah, later we now open the question uh, session for the participant here in the webinar. Uh, before I can inform you that there will be a you know special gift. For the uh, for the most uh, interesting question given by the participant, and it's sponsored by Marta Tilaar. <laughs> so maybe, um, yeah, operator, can we open the first question? Okay, thank you. Can I, Umeri? Hi, Barif. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kilala. Uh, it is a very wonderful uh, experience to have a. Uh, virtual visit for Martatina Art Production. Uh, I'm Arif Rahman, Agriculture Attaché uh, for the Embassy of Brussels. Uh, I would like to know deeper uh, on the, your, your company and the farmer selection, because uh, I think if we want to make agriculture business sustain, we have to make that both parts, both parties, yeah, uh, the company and the farmers, have uh, again a uh, benefit again can uh, uh, appropriate profit each other. You gain profit, and also the farmers can live and uh, prosper with uh, the the profit they they earn. Uh, that's why I would like to know about uh, your assistant beside the capacity building that have uh, that you have uh, saw in the in the video. Uh, beside that, beside the capacity building, uh, do you provide like uh, farming input uh, for, for instance, high quality seed or organic fertilizer, or uh, perhaps you also give higher price than your competitor? Because I think the price is uh, the most, you know, the most uh, that a farmer want uh, to have, yeah. It, it will be, uh, they will have, uh, they will do anything to have a uh, more uh, price, yeah. Uh, and, the, and the second is about uh, the sustainability uh, itself. Uh, do you provide a kind of a contract uh, from the company to farmers so that they will not sell their product to other company? Uh, because I think this is a, a very good uh, model uh, from, uh, company, uh, particularly in the agribusiness sector, uh, and I think uh, if uh, it is good, I think I will introduce you to uh, my colleague in 
uh, director general of horticulture where uh, this product uh, is their responsible okay uh, that's my question so two questions mr kilala thank you very much for your attention thank you Barif. um in terms of collaborating with farmers there are many things in fact this is a subject that is very interesting also is a part of my dissertation for my phd uh, on how businesses can impact uh, uh, farmer communities yeah. number one uh, it's as simple as a uh, guarantee buying. Mm, so, guarantee um, buying, yeah. Oh, so great, great. Have a quota, uh, of a guarantee buying of certain amounts of uh, of the uh, of the uh, harvested uh, products, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, we, we ensure that we negotiate uh, the price is twenty percent or twenty five percent above the market value. Uh, yes. Uh, great, what is great. what I what we found is very uh, disappointing. Yeah, uh, before we, we we embarked into this business, before uh, we went to uh, Aceh, and Aceh is one of the number one producer for nilam oil, mm -hmm. uh, pacholi pacholi oil, mm -hmm. and pacholi oil is uh, is very integral part of parfum mixing mm -hmm. in throughout the world. So what we found that a lot of uh, foreign people came to to Aceh, and they become the rentenir, you know, they become the middleman, mm -hmm. and and the, and the, the plant itself, they, they sell through uh, as a simplicia only, mm -hmm. so without uh, processing, you know, it's mm -hmm. very, very cheap, whereas all the middlemen and all the user are paying a lot of uh, uh, price for, for mm -hmm. that kind of oil, you know, because mm -hmm. It's uh, the, the, the oil is being used for all mix mixing of all mm -hmm. perfume around the world. So, and Aceh is the number one producer for Nila, for that yeah. uh, particular plant. So, being experienced that, you know, we are saying that uh, our farmer have to be more uh, prosperous. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you go to France in south of France, Exxon Provence, for example, you can see a lot of uh, farmers of uh, lavender. And they are very rich. I know one of the lavender uh, farmers who become successful business person, Loxitan, for example. Mm -hmm. It comes from a farmer's camp. Mm -hmm. So uh, our aim, our uh, founder's aim is how to make our farmers also prosper. So that's why mm -hmm. margin above uh, the, the market price, I think is fair for them. Mm -hmm. As long as the standardization mm -hmm. of the output it's acceptable, but sometimes also the farmers are very naughty farmer. Yeah, sometimes uh, we have the standard, but they they give us you know the standard, uh, you know they mix yeah the standard yeah uh, below standard and uh, right on the standard. So the most important thing for cosmetics uh, farming is the standardization and the geolocation. So we help them also. We're not uh, choosing you know uh, our farmers based on on uh, Without data, we, we, we choose them because we know that according to the geo uh, locations, these farmers are suitable for planting philanthropus, for example, mm. or planting uh, coconut, for example. So we help them also to, to measure what kind of uh, uh, plants that is suitable for, for their areas. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in collaboration with the government, we build infrastructure. For example, we want we have a project with the maritime uh, ministry for uh, seaweed. Uh, the government are promising us and already done a lot of um, infrastructure building. So all the farmers of seaweed, they, they give them access for roads. They give them uh, uh, seeds. Uh, they give them know-how how to cultivate, and then. Uh, we collaborate with also with the government also to to have the distillations on the locations mm -hmm. so that uh, the price can be higher again mm -hmm. so for example the if right now we buy them uh, simplicia form uh, later in the future they can we can buy them you know a semi finished product mm -hmm. so we can purify it here in jakarta mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. then again the price of the uh, farmers at, in that community can be even higher than mm -hmm. They just a simplicia buying things like that. Okay, uh, so do you have a kind of uh, contract for to, to farmer? Of or course, no? because we to give farm. them. Uh, it is a community, but we build a community. Uh, we give them contracts 
for uh, X amount of tons per, mm. per year or per mm. month. Mm. And after that, we are not give, uh, keeping them exclusive. We, mm. we try to collaborate with uh, German uh, government, for example. And then uh, they, they will buy the product, uh, the, the, the raw materials from our farmers. So we can be a, a facilitator for them to do export because the standard uh, of our farmers is already, uh, you know, ECOFADIS. ECOFADIS is very difficult, uh, mm. very difficult compliance. Uh. Mm. It's from the soil until the transportation of the raw materials until the farmer itself have to be audited by 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 ECOFADIS. So it's very difficult. But again, our farmers there is a for our farmers there is an added benefit for them to join with us so that they can supply uh, their products to us, but also can also uh, surfacing other company that want to buy their products. Hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Pak Gilala. Si, Pak. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Arif, Pak Kilala. Thank you very much for the very comprehensive uh, answer. Uh, let's see if we have another question from the participant. No, it will be okay. So perhaps if uh, there 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 is one question coming from the participant through the chat box, it's from uh, Mrs. Nurisa Arfani. She's the trade attaché in Berlin. My colleague. Uh, currently, demand for natural products are rising, especially during the pandemic. It will be attractive for Matatilar to enter European market if the natural product as some raw material has certified in organic label. It's, as we can see that Matatilar already have a very uh, EcoCert certification and also EcoFADIS uh, certification. Uh, but in the future, do you have this plan to promote the organic products to EU market? the i mean the 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 cosmetic based organic product here in in european market not the natural ingredients not the ingredients but the product itself do you have any program for that mr Pakila? Yeah. the way i we see it as a business uh, it's a business strategy right uh, <laughs> jadi, um, for us there are two ways to enter uh, european markets number one is through the raw ingredients first yeah. Whereas uh, we have uh, good partners, for example, Clarions, mm -hmm. and uh, all the distribution handled by them. And it's uh, we can slowly uh, grab the European market through the ingredients first, because no no uh, investment required. Mm -hmm. And another, another one is through products. Now, products require a huge investment in terms of marketing, if we want to be very successful. So uh, this option number two, I think we as a company have to measure our strength in terms of financial strength. And uh, we decided for this year until uh, three years from now, we want to focus our uh, uh, presence only in ASEAN country because in terms of proximity is very close. In terms of consumer taste is also very similar. And in terms of needs also similar. So uh, in terms of, really uh, what do you call it? establishing ourselves uh, in European Union uh, we in the short short terms we don't have any uh, plan but we are willing to accept just a trading uh, just uh, just like a trading uh, business uh, I think it's fine because uh, it's not that easy just to to drop your product in the supermarket for example and then your product will fly off the shelf it's it's not that Easy. It's a need to be pampered. It's need to be to put a lot of investment on the, you know, the listing fee in terms of uh, uh, marketing and promotions. Yeah. So uh, I think for for this short period of time, we are concentrating on the ASEAN ASEAN market. Although we are not uh, uh, close to uh, close the option for for the you know the European, the African, and also the American market. <laughs> Thank you, Pak uh, I have another interesting question. It's coming from one of my colleagues. Uh, he is also diaspora in Indonesia, diaspora here who live in, in Belgium. He, he already owns a business here. Uh, he has a salon, but the salon is dedicated for only for male. 
So he'd like to ask whether that Marta Tila uh, already produced uh, the serious line of products specifically for male, because if you can see that Marta Tila is very uh, only for women products, right? But you have you have several okay. one, but like pomade or something like that, cologne, okay. and re, yeah, rehydration. But but how is it for specific for yeah, for male? Yeah, uh, minimum quantity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so do you have any plan to create those products special for for male? Actually, we have a, a male line uh, from Biocost brand. It's mm -hmm. a skincare for men, huh? and now it's. Uh, really 100% uh, only for export uh, mm -hmm. products. So I think uh, if it's uh, if uh, tadi Bapak interested, uh, yes. we can discuss it uh, further detail uh, yeah. probably later. Yeah, yeah. 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 We have, we have that, uh, it's from a coffee, yeah, that, that I mentioned the ingredients from the coffee uh, peri cups. That's, that's that's very interesting, Pak Lala. Yeah, he just mentioned to me that he is very interesting to in that. So <laughs> if you maybe you can we can see the <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> oh no no. So, it's quite, so maybe like yeah, maybe later we can we can continue the discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Ray. <laughs> yeah, perhaps mukanya bersih banget deh, Bapak. <laughs> Jaga terus tuh kayaknya tuh. Sepa terus sih ya Pak. Bahagia ya Pak. <laughs> Very happy. Thank you, Pak. Oh, okay. So uh, Pak Kilala, we have another question from the participant uh, Mrs. Irma Boti. Uh, she asked about whether you have fair trade certification because concerning that you have the community for farmer and also uh, for yeah you doing the woman empowerment do you have like some kind of fair trade certification uh, or is it already uh, uh, represent by the ecofadis for the sustainable incorporate and because uh, it is it is very internationally uh, well known right the adding the value added aside from the organic certification itself the fair trade certification usually now the, the consumer sees beyond what's the product itself, the story of the products. Is it really giving benefit for the farmer? Is it really giving benefit for the community? And is it like uh, uh, very concerned for the for the labor, farmer labor and against the, yeah, also support the human rights? Yeah, do you, do you have some kind of certificate for that? Like so um, in terms of fair trade for farmers is already included in ECOFADIS food. Not only they measure the supply chain okay. flexibility, they also measure the food, carbon footprint yeah. and also human rights and uh, 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 free trade. Yeah. Yeah. But in terms of human rights and also millennial, millennium goals, mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned, uh, as I showed the, in the presentation, there is a spa school for the farmers' children mm -hmm. that, that don't want to go to formal school. We give them a free uh, training and free uh, lodging and boarding and lodging for them and guaranteed uh, working uh, contracts with us. Mm -hmm. And that particular empowerment program already acknowledged by the UN. As you can see also, there's mm -hmm. a picture of Ibu Marta having an award from the UN for that woman empowerment and to prevent woman trafficking. So uh, in terms of empowerment, we don't have any uh, certification yet. But in terms of acknowledgement by the UN, we have uh, we won two two awards for 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 women empowerment and prevent women trafficking. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you very much, Pak Lala. That's a very very good news for us. I mean, for you have a very multinational company, and you indeed you have very extensive and very comprehensive sustainability certification, not only for the plantation, the products, but also right now in Europe they are really concerning about the con corporate sustainability, which is now we can answer for that for what they are concerning, mostly coming from the third country. So we have another question from Ibu Saradatu. Um, maybe you can give the floor to Ibu Saradatu. Yes, Mr. Kilala, uh, I have a question in regards to uh, your own research of Narkatila as a group or as uh, several uh, companies. Where do you 
do you think you position yourself uh, in the EU specifically? And also my second question would be, what would be uh, your competition here in Europe? That if you have any uh, information on that or you have done already some research from your team before that. Can you repeat the first question? So the first question is that, where do you put your position, where do you position yourself in the European market as a group, Marta Pilar group, uh, as per your company, for instance, and also per product. So per product, where do you position yourself in the European Union market? Uh, for instance, if you have any competition that is already listed, that can be as a competition, so let's say I would like to import your products. Uh, what do you think I should position your products in? Uh, do you know, uh, well, in terms of concept, you can see uh, there's a many uh, uh, Dutch shop called Rituals in Europe, right? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. In terms of concept, uh, position as Rituals. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, formulations and organic certifications, uh, plus halal, I don't think there is um, uh, direct competitions for that mm -hmm. because not only organic, but also halal, which is it's very important nowadays in Europe. Yeah, a lot of uh, immigrants coming out from Iran, Turkey, especially in Germany, yeah, there's a lot of uh, more Turkish yeah. community than the Germans. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, I think in, in, in Brussels also, there's a lot of uh, uh, Muslim. Yeah? Uh, I yeah. see I saw a lot of Muslim. So in terms of that, we can position for the Muslim community, I think, mm -hmm. because it's very hot. Yeah? Uh, mm -hmm. Muslim Renaissance now beca not becoming religious only, but it's also a, it's a Renaissance of Muslim. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Everybody appreciate, you know, if it's uh, labeled halal, meaning it's clean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. meaning it's more healthy plus organic certified. So I think to cater the Muslim uh, audience in, in, in Europe, I think it's very, very good because there's a, a gap, a gap between supply and demand. If mm -hmm. you can see, there's a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, organic uh, produced in, in, in Europe, but none of them halal. But if you can combine the two and target for the Muslim community, I think we can start from that. Mm. Mm. So the best of the two worlds, right? yeah, the, for uh, the organic according to EU standard, mm -hmm. but also halal according to you know the beliefs. Uh, yeah. yeah, the demography. And in between of your lines of product, where which one would that be best? Mm -hmm. That's uh, Solusi. Solusi is export based product. There is certified halal and also certified EcoCert and soon will be Cosmos. Mm -hmm. So Solusi, the grapes that I mentioned, the story mm -hmm. of the, the ingredients from the Singaraja area from Bali, mm -hmm. I think is one of the suitable range for, for export. And also the spa product, what we call the Dewi Sri Spa, mm -hmm. is also award winners uh, uh, products uh, in also in America. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, celebrities using also uh, there was three spa products in uh, US. We sponsored a uh, couple of mo movies uh, mm -hmm. for there was three spa. Uh, for example, Eat, Love and Pray, also using uh, the products of Bali, uh, of our there was three spa uh, range of uh, product, yeah, professional product spa. Yeah. So I think for the European market, I think have to be angled toward halal and organic. Because the two concepts are very in line between halal and organic, yeah, clean and pure. And then the other one is the spa product. It's exotic. You know, if you say Indonesia, people probably don't know. But if you say Bali needs spa, then you know, people can, you know, it's easier for them to, 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 to believe. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Kirala. Thank you, Mr. Kirala. Also, uh, uh, one thing is we have a, a decorative line for Muslim. Yeah, we call Amalia. Mm -hmm. Amalia meaning hope. Uh, it's it's also uh, gearing toward the Middle Eastern market. 
right now uh, all our um, what do you call contacts here in duty free we, we we will do a business with duty free around the world and the person there said that i want uh, a, a cosmetic brands that is halal and also uh, natural so uh, they choose for duty free around the world uh, this is based in mexico the duty free is based on mexico and he said they, uh, they want to have a, a decorative lipstick eyeshadow halal yeah because uh, in european countries there is uh, a lot of muslim communities there is also a gap yeah uh, there is a gap between uh, uh, people who want halal product and the product that is available in the market so i think three three parts yeah it's for uh, skin care we can use solusi body care and spa we can use uh, dewi sri spa and then the decorative we can have a halal cosmetic line uh, amalia is based on morocco uh, we, we 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 make the brand based on the, Mar- uh, the culture of morocco so it's very elegant there is a catalog already sent in kbri yes, uh, so you can browse the catalog uh, browse along, uh, browse along the catalog so you can really uh, choose uh, what kind of product that is suitable for for the market in belgium yes okay. thank you very much yes thank you very much pak kilala i think we have just one more uh, question uh, maybe we open for one more question is we have this uh, it's uh, from joseph it's he's one of the student here indonesian student in belgium Maybe we can give uh, the floor to Yosef. He would like to raise the question himself. Yeah. Thank you very much for letting me. Hi, Pa. Hi. I'm actually a student from the Belgium, from the uh, Liege University. Uh, I would like to ask him about the Marta Tila Ars. We are talking, uh, you you were giving, giving us the uh, presentations about your product in terms of the, the materials within the product itself and it's really really good and i actually want to question about the packaging itself is that the packaging uh, of your uh, of martha uh, uh, follow the follow the sustainable of bioplastic uh, actually the uh, packaging it's recyclable or not yeah thank you pa so we try to be in line with our core uh, value which is uh, sustainability yeah. so um we can use as a simple as pet but pet is a recyclable uh, types of plastics as you know but also in terms of several sku that we are uh, gearing toward export for example the solusi range uh, we do a lot of uh, modifications on the packaging in terms of the plastic used and also in terms of the ink that is printed on the on the packaging itself so uh, for several SKUs but because again in Indonesia market uh, price is very 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 important so we cannot too high up yeah but for the export market uh, we can uh, play along with with kind of that kind of issues of sustainability For example, the ink, vegetable ink, for example, we use, and all the the materials for the secondary packaging, the 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 dus apa ya dus cardboard, uh, inner dus cardboard, yeah, all the cardboard is FSC uh, certified. Jadi, so uh, it's everything we try to as close as possible to be perfect. But again, for the Indonesian market, it's impossible to do it because again, in Indonesia, you talk about only price. cheaper 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 yeah. but in european in european countries america we can uh, we already uh, have that kind of uh, close to perfect close to perfect uh, assortment okay thank you very much thank you okay yes okay thank you very much paglala paglala i'm sorry but we have another one maybe just a final uh, a final response from our agriculture uh, from our industrial attache uh, mr mogadisu ertanto he, he has a very interesting name mogadisu yeah mogadisu but, saya pikir yes. <laughs> but we call him mogi good afternoon pak oh, so cute yeah mogi good afternoon pak lala ya pak 
Thank you for a very comprehensive uh, presentation from your uh, company. I'm really uh, appreciate that uh, regarding your activity in the how you support the farmers and also support the research in uh, our indigenous uh, resources. And for the research, I, I want to know more about that. How you institute or you how you support uh, the research? I mean that how you manage the research for the uh, uh, from your company either. Or you 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 have your internal team, or you also uh, cooperate with the other uh, education uh, institutions such as university, university or the other government institution for the research, mm -hmm. or or how you normally because we are from the Ministry of Industry normally uh, acknowledge that uh, the the research for the uh, private company normally they try to keep internally with the uh, within the the company. If uh, if we can, uh, uh, what if we can uh, uh, support or endorse the the private company to to cooperate with a uh, university or the others uh, uh, research institution. So this will be very very good for the our innovation system, national innovation system. And I I, I want to know what more in your company thank you okay um yeah but thank you so much for for the question pak mo pak mo pak mo mogi ya jadi bingung jadi begini uh, so um our research first of all is i think uh, ibu marta is really pay attention on how we do a research so from the beginning uh, from 1999 when we formed the marta tilar innovation center we almost every year allocate 5% of our income toward the building the research. Because at that moment, 1999, our partners is also a big, uh, the biggest pharmaceutical company in Indonesia, Kalbe Pharma. So they also have the, the same uh, way of thinking that everything should be researched. Everything should be proven by science. So again, uh, from 1999 until Last year, no, because of the pandemic, but until up to 1990, 19, uh, 2018, it's still around about 4%, 5% of our budget is for uh, research activities. And in order to do that and to speed up the innovation process, we do a lot of collaborations with universities. We have currently, just currently, although in the pandemic era, we collaborate more than 26 universities across Indonesia and also uh, research uh, LIPI and BBPT also included in that consortium. So uh, not only local, but also Leiden, uh, Sing Anus, yeah, uh, Singapore, kan? and then uh, several other universities. Yeah? Uh, we do a lot of collaborations in also, we do a lot of collaboration with government. So we collaborate with more than five ministries because we cannot do it alone. And uh, what we do is we, we gather all the scientists from LIPI, BPPT, uh, BRIN to, to, to come with us with some innovation products. And then we, we, what we are selecting, uh, we select uh, several of them. And then when we select, a uh, couple of uh, innovation from each. So we commit to do uh, funding and also we commit to do uh, uh, go to market uh, strategies. Yeah? So a lot of our innovation is also joint patent or joint, uh, what do you call it, uh, joint sharing, uh, profit sharing with the scientists. So not only uh, farmers, but also Indonesian innovators. Also, we want to give them incentive if their uh, innovations are sellable worldwide. So, uh, per, uh, uh, small uh, proportions of the income will be for the government and also for the scientists itself. So, it, many people want to collaborate with us for that to to find the way to the market. Because right now the problem is Indonesia. In Indonesia, there's a lot of smart people, 
doing a very good job on research, but there's no market. So our parts, uh, Matatulan Innovation Center is also a bridging between their innovation, innovative works with the markets. So uh, yeah, we, we, we play around a lot with the government, uh, universities, and also businesses. Yeah. Um, several of our uh, partners is, for example, Sensian of the United States for the uh, colorants. Uh, we want to collaborate with the Dutch IMCD, for example, for emollient. So everything should be working together. Government, uh, what do you call it? Uh, institutions, uh, the, uh, uh, educations, and also uh, the community itself have to be working together to, to be able for this strategy to, to go smoothly. So we are not working alone, and we share everything to everybody. Thank you, Bagel. Bagel. Okay. okay, I think uh, it's very interesting webinar. It's very interesting uh, insight for us, Pak Kilala. We appreciate it very much. For uh, almost two and a, and a half hours, we already enjoy what we have from Matatila Air, mm -hmm. starting from the raw materials, the process, the production process, the packaging, and what make the Matatila is modernized and now ready to even more global, not only in the Asian market, but also we might want to see it in the European market itself. Mm -hmm. And one, maybe one interesting point that there are there, I think there's a possibility for of for from one of our uh, diaspora here. Maybe want to try to introduce your products here in Belgium. We we'll wait for that. Okay. okay. Thank you very much, Pak Kilala. I, our highest appreciation for all the presentation from you and also for the team from from Martatila Art Group. Uh, it is very pleasure and very interesting uh, webinar today. I give the floor back to Marisa. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Miss Mary, for your support on moderating the Q&A session. And we have arrived at the end of our program. Uh, time flies so fast. <laughs> I would like to express my gratitude to the Ambassador of Indonesia to Belgium, His Excellency Ambassador Mr. Andre Hadi and his spouse and the Embassy of Indonesia Brussels. And of course, I want to uh, would like to express our gratitude also uh, my gratitude to the CEO of Marta Tilara Group, Mr. Kilala Tilaar, and all the committee who has worked uh, to prepare this event. And last but not least, thank you to all the participants. And we are honored for the chance to uh, introduce our uh, Indonesia's natural uh, cultural wealth that has been research and develop uh, to become a product of uh, Matra Telar Group. And we are sorry for any inconvenience. Hopefully, we can meet again in the next activity and stay healthy by following health protocols, maintain your distance, always wear masks and wash your hands. And con congratulations to two winners of Marta Telar uh, Salon today, Sa, uh, Ibu Nur Lisa and Ibu Irma, Irma Botik. Okay, and Ibu Irma Botik. Okay, congratulations once again to uh, two winners for today's event. Okay, so stay healthy and um, wear masks and wash your hands. Thank you and see you later. Thank you very much. Terima kasih banyak, Pak Kilala. Bu, kalau ada pertanyaan, kita tim kita siap juga sih. Jadi kan kemarin we send the catalog already. Yes. Uh, itu mungkin bisa dibaca atau bisa di itu buat diskus, discussion tim saya sebetulnya udah siap nih ada berapa orang nih ada delapan orang nih <laughs> nunggu pertanyaan cuman mereka malu-malu kucing kayaknya <laughs> udah very comprehensive sama Pak Kilala udah langsung cover the whole thing iya <laughs> yeah, betul Pak Kilala menguas, menguasai segalanya nih Pak Kilala nih iya <laughs> lah <laughs> kan nanti much. kalau ada apa-apa please contact us Bu ya yep, we are yep. ready to backup uh, Indonesian Embassy at Brussels. Thank you, yep. Pak Kilala. Thank you very much, Pak Kilala. And Bukheria? Yeah, thank you so much. Great. Terima kasih, Pak Kilala. Masih ada. Masih dong. Luar biasa. Terima kasih, Pak.
Terima kasih, Bu. Sama-sama. Kapan balik, Bu? Kita ngopi-ngopi, Bu. Iya, pasti, pasti, pasti. Kita <laughs> Cino, ya. Iya, dong, Bu. Ditunggu okay. juga eh, di sini, eh, Pak Kerala. Saya tutup sakau ini, Bu. Sakau bau pesawat. <laughs> saya udah setahun gak, gak naik pesawat, nih. Oh, iya. <laughs> Cuma ditunggu di Brusel, Pak. Ditunggu, Pak. Ditunggu terus, Bu. Ditunggu terus, Bu. Ditunggu terus, Bu. Pak Kirela, ditunggu di Brusel, ya. Aduh, mau sih, Bu. Sudah vaksin belum? Sudah vaksin belum? Belum, belum. Oh, belum. Ya, ya. Soon, insya Allah. Ya, Oke. Okay. Siapa tahu. Baik. Thank you, Pak. Baik, terima kasih. Terima kasih, Pak. Nanti kita akan kontak Kirela, siap, Pak. Enjoy your afternoon. Oke, okay. nah. ya udah malam juga ya Pak Kirela. Selamat malam kalau lagi. Selamat istirahat Pak. Selamat istirahat juga. Ya, terima kasih, bye. bye. Terima kasih. Terima kasih Bu Foni. Terima kasih banyak Bu Foni. Mbak Marisa, terima kasih. Terima kasih. Oke. Okay.